question for you guys. What is a lowballer? Do they really even exist? And if they do, does that make you a reseller, a lowballer? So let's talk about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And today, as I said on the other side, I wanna to talk to you about a topic that comes up quite a bit, either in the lives or just in comments on the channel, and that is how to deal with lowballers. But before we can even answer that question, you gotta wonder, do they even really exist? And yes, okay, I get it. We all know there's that buyer out there who's going to offer you a dollar on a hundred dollar item, okay? Why? Why would they do that? Why would they bother? Why would they waste their time? Maybe some seller out there is caved in. Maybe some seller out there has given them such a great deal, maybe by accident, or maybe just to get rid of the item, that now it's ingrained in their mind that's how they negotiate they start off at as low as possible in an effort to try to get the best deal okay and most low ballers from my experience if we call them low ballers okay i really i guess you can call them a low baller but gotta acknowledge if they really even exist but for me most low ballers are going to come up a little bit okay and they're going to offer you what they are willing to pay for your item. And the reason why I wonder out loud if lowballers exist is the idea that what is a lowballer? Are you a lowballer as a seller? Did you go to the, the yard sale and uh, on that item they're offering you know, to sell for $10 that you looked up as worth 50? Did you offer them five? I know I do. I know I get those deals all the time. Does that make me a low baller? Um, every person's situation is different as a seller. Um, somebody might have an item that's been on their shelves for months, and that one find that one person comes by. This item has never had any interest since you've listed it up until now, and someone's offering you five dollars on that twenty dollar item. Is that a low ball? Is that person a low baller? How are you going to handle that request? If you're into the item for five, plus let's say it's five bucks plus shipping, are you gonna take the deal? Because you've been sitting on that item forever? Something to consider. If a bad buy um, you know, requires you to get rid of it at cost, you can get your cost out of it. It's not always necessarily a bad deal to move on from something that's dead stock, okay? So what makes a bad buyer? So I guess I'll let you answer that question because I've already given you my answer to it. I'm not sure they really exist. Um, it's just maybe perspective. If you consider the fact that we all are looking for deals, right? And maybe you're dealing with someone who's going to try to flip that item themselves. Does it make them a low baller person to try to get the best deal? Now, I'm not talking about the idiots. And I'll just put it out there right, right there. I'll call them idiots more than low ballers. The idiots that uh, come at you for a dollar for a $50 item and then you either throw a counter back their way in hopes that they're gonna maybe uh, stop smoking whatever they're smoking and uh, decide to negotiate a little bit but the, the idiots I talk about are the ones that come back with another offer for a dollar like these guys aren't serious I'm not talking about those people those people are just playing games and aren't serious about buying your item. In fact, if you probably accepted the item for a dollar, they probably wouldn't pay anyway. So that's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the person who's trying to get a deal and we call them low ballers. Now I recently received a message in the, one of the comments from a viewer by the name of Jimmy Pika Chuchoy. I hope I got that right. And he says, thanks so much for your video. I watching you talk about your experiences. I assume he says, I like watching you talk about your experiences. What are your thoughts on low ballers? I had an item for $70. The buyer low balls to 40. So I offer him 65 stating it's the lowest I can do. 
He continues to low ball higher, 53, and higher, 62. Now my offer to him has expired, and I told him that my buy it now price is now firm, but now all of a sudden he wants it for my offer price. I think I'm just going to give him that offer price, but how do you normally handle situations like this? Okay. So in my opinion, the, the initial offer of 40 for a $70 item isn't necessarily a low ball offer. By as a seller, by you advertising to the buyer or the shopper in this particular case, that you are interested in selling your item for 70 bucks, however, make me an offer, you have the best offer feature selected, then you're inviting people to come in and make an offer on your item. And that's why best offer is a good tool to move your merchandise, but that's why for me, I'm not going to enable best offers on my listing initially. So you guys know me, the first 30 days in a listing, I'll go in and list the item at the price I believe it should sell for. And I have been using best offers in the past, but I'm gonna turn that feature off initially, okay? So after 30 days, you guys know I go in there and I do the sell similar thing where I end the item and I go in and sell similar and, and fix things in the listing, okay? So for me, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to enable best offer at that point. So it's been on eBay for 30 days and I'm renewing the listing. Instead of doing a relist, I'm doing a sell similar. And I'll enable best offer. I'll evaluate my, my initial asking price. I'll maybe tweak the title. I'll go in there, maybe switch the photos around and make some changes to the listing. Maybe even add a higher promoted rate to get that item to move. So for me, by the time it gets to the buyer for them to even give me a best offer, well, um, I'm already trying to get rid of the item anyway. I'm already in, I want to move this item mode anyway. So for me, if I get that $70 item, they come at me for, with 40 and maybe I'll try to negotiate a little bit. Maybe I'll say, you always want to keep in mind, what am I into this item for? Okay. If I lost this item today, if this item like fell on the ground and broke, what would I be out? Okay. So the good news for me is most of my items I'm in for anywhere from a dollar to ten dollars. Okay. That's and usually the the median is around five dollars. Like these shoes I'm into like for two dollars a pair. But um, I'm talking about just in general. When I'm at a yard sale, I, I, I usually don't buy stuff for more than five bucks. Okay, I'm lowballing, if you want to call it that, lowballing that particular seller at the yard sale because again, the way you win in this game is sourcing. And the lower you can source, the more room you have to work with these people and to maybe give them a good deal and you can make money as well. So in Jimmy's case, my first question to him is, how much are you into the item for? Uh, my second question is, how long have you been sitting on this item? Okay, are you waiting for, you know, we, we made the video months back about the unicorn buyer. Are you sitting around waiting for the unicorn buyer? And if that's the case, well, um, hold firm, I guess, right? But if you're trying to move on from that item, maybe it's uh, something you thought was going to sell fairly quick and it hasn't sold, you've been sitting on it for months, Honestly, if I'm into that item for five bucks and this person comes out of the blue and says 40, I might not even be negotiating. I might just say, take it. You know, I've made my item, uh, my money back six times over after fees. And I'm assuming you're adding shipping on top of this because a lot of the items that I sell, uh, I add shipping to. And so that would be the end of it. I'd have the sale. Um, but thankfully, this guy was willing to come back and try to work out a deal. And any, every time you put best offer on your listing, you're telling somebody that the item price you have listed isn't firm, okay? And it tells them that there's some wiggle room and we're not talking $5 on a $70 item. Now, some people might come at you with an offer of 65 on a $70 item and of course, that's fine. But there are people out there, everyone has different experiences. And unfortunately, other sellers condition these buyers on how to behave when they're buying your item. And I think we take, we take the time to get offended. We're like, wow, the nerve of this person to offer me $20 on a $50 item, you know, and, you, and you're the one who bought that item for five bucks at a yard sale. So let's put it into perspective, guys. 
we're not the only ones out looking for deals when we're at yard sales. Of course, you can't negotiate at a thrift store, but at a flea market, a yard sale, that type of thing, um, you're kind of the same buyer, aren't you? If we're being honest with ourselves, because I know I am. So I really don't want to call these people low ballers. Now, maybe call them idiots when they give you a dollar offer and they don't budge at all and they give you a, you know, they up it by a penny or something stupid like that. You can tell when people are playing games, but I can tell you the majority of the offers you're going to get from a buyer um, are going to be somewhat serious. I mean, they may come up a few bucks here and a few bucks there, but they're not going to play games like some of these idiots do. Okay. So let's exclude those people and just know that most people are just trying to get a good deal. Okay. So it's how you want to deal with it. Now, in a nutshell, what I told Jimmy is uh, I would have come back and I would have basically, and this is the way I negotiate, I put out my best price, okay? So if, let's say, I'm not ready to move on from the item, in this particular case, I have it priced at 70, they come at, to me, they come at me for 40 bucks, and uh, in my mind, I'm into the item for five, right? I can still make good money here. Um, I might come down to 50 and say, uh, this is the best price I can offer. This is the very best price I can offer uh, between eBay fees, my cost on the item, and after it's all said and done, I still have to ship this thing to you. That's the best I can do. I can't go any lower, so let me know. Now, there's times these people will come back with you know an offer that's somewhere between their initial offer and the one you just gave them, and I'll just come back with the same offer and say, you know, I've I'm not trying to negotiate with you. I'm trying to give you the best price that I can, and this is it. So um, do what you need to do with that. Now, if they come back a third time, if it doesn't seem like they're seriously maybe even reading the message I put out, um, I'll either decline it, you know, maybe they'll come back at the same price, or um, I'll just throw the same number out until they run out of opportunities. Then they'll email you, like in this case uh, it, with Jimmy, and I'll say, look, my price, is firm okay I gave you the offer I will be glad to reprice the item if you're willing to buy it now because you can't send them any more offers after their initial four chances right and either they'll they'll tell you hey I want the deal I want this item or not and you just leave it there I think there's a lot of people that kind of you know told me hey you talk too much you 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 talk too long you you type out too much well I do the the uh, the voice to text a lot but uh, you know you give the customer too much information you're talking too much in these messages you have like uh, the, the last video I put out uh, where I was dealing with that that buyer who was mad about not getting their item on time and I believe in good customer service so how you run your business is how you run your business and I negotiate the same way when I'm dealing with the shopper who's looking to maybe buy my item, uh, I'm no different than that used car salesman, or car salesman, I don't want to say used car salesman, it doesn't sound too good. I'm like that car salesman who, there's a prospective buyer on my lot, I'm gonna go out and sell the heck out of that, okay? And if that means, you know, I'm going to, you know, come out and say, you know, add some things, hey, I can ship this thing fast, um, I can get it out in the mail quickly, uh, but this is the lowest that I can offer because I have expenses. See, a lot of buyers don't understand. When they see the word free shipping, they think it's free, right? They don't think that anyone has to pay for that shipping label. So you got to make them understand. Look, I have a cost. I had to buy this item. I have to pay eBay fees because a lot of buyers are oblivious to that as well. And it's going to cost money to ship this item out to you. And this is the best I can do as a result. And you'll be surprised. There's people who are reasonable and understanding and they will say, okay, fine, your offer is fair and I will go with that and they'll, they'll accept it, they'll pay for it. And the people who are just trying to get a deal, and remember, you're not the only seller out there. There's other offers I'm sure they've put out as well. And guess what? Um, if you don't give them the price they're looking for, they're gonna move on. Just like if you're at a yard sale. If you don't get the price on that item, that you're looking for that's going to make you enough profit to resell it, it doesn't make you a low baller you're just looking for the right price and you're going to move on and i just want you guys to have a little bit different perspective on some of these people stop calling them low ballers because they're just trying to get a good deal like you are 
maybe call them idiots if they're you know playing games but for the most part most people are just trying to get a deal so I want your thoughts on this subject comment down below let me know what you think uh, while you're at it hit that like button I would appreciate it if you guys if you enjoy the channel if you'd hit the subscribe button and of course hit that notification bell so you could be notified when I make another video or when I go live I think sometimes we have to just change our perspective when we're dealing with people most of the time most people are good people most people aren't scammers most people aren't trying to get over on you most people are just trying to get the best deal for the money that they have and as we enter into a bad economy which I think most of you guys can at least acknowledge that there are going to be more people out there who are going to continue to look for even better deals or deeper discounts and that doesn't make them bad people it doesn't make them low ballers it just makes them human right so let's start looking at it as opportunities and, and instead of looking for ways to be offended when we get these offers but dealing with these offers is yet another example of how sometimes flipping ain't easy. I want you guys to have an excellent rest of your day, and we will talk to you very soon.